In this video, we're going to look at the program that Assignment 6 is based on. I'll explain some things about how it works and um, what the code involves. So first of all, um, our program does some technical analysis on stock price data. And I got the data from Yahoo Finance. This is an example of what the interface looks like on Yahoo Finance. And you can pick um, your time period, your, your, direct, your intervals, um, and so on for just about any common stock that's listed. And once you've got your value set, you can download them to a spreadsheet. Now, that's what I did. And what it actually does is create what's called a comma separated values file, which is a text file based on the, the uh, display you saw on the previous slide uh, with all the values, including the headings. And each row is shown as a row and the different values are separated by commas. So you can see the date, the open, the high, the low, the close, the volume, and the adjusted close. Now, if you have a file of comma separated values to start with, one thing you can do in Excel is just open it uh, from Excel and then save it as an Excel workbook. And that works great, but um, that means you will have a new workbook for uh, each set of data. And what we're supposing is that we have a workbook set up with some analysis tools in it, and we want to load the data into the workbook. Okay, so to do that, another way to do it is on the data tab in Excel, um, you can use the button to load data from other sources. And that will give you a dialog where you can navigate to your file and choose it. And then Excel will provide a wizard, as they call it, to help you upload your data correctly. So for example, it lets you pick whether your data is comma delimited or tab delimited, which is the other common format or anything else. And it also lets you omit any columns you don't want. So here's the result I got by using that particular method. Okay, now another way to do it, of course, is to have a macro that you wrote and use that to read the data. And um, that an example of such a macro is included in our workbook um, and let me just show you. Uh, this is called the stock price demo, and it's posted with your materials. And here's our um, subroutine to get the data, and it calls it its own subroutine to actually import the text file using line input. I'll say more about that in a minute. <clears throat> what we did was to actually read in the data and leave some of the columns blank for calculated values to uh, be put in later. And also another comment, this macro takes a while to run because the data file is quite big. So actually, let's go over and take a look. I'm going to run that macro, and you, I have all my macros set up with buttons here. So I'm going to push Get Data, and now I'm going to navigate. So I'll go to my Dropbox, and um, it's down in here. In assignment six and here it is so and I'm using a comma as a separator okay and now I'm waiting for this to do its work and here it is and you as I said you can see I started putting it in column E instead of column A if we go back to the code Um, one thing I did was to, uh, here, I, I made sure that if there, after I read one of one line into the input, I wanted to divide it up and put it into, um, the different columns. And the way, uh, I want to avoid having a special case for the last item, because typically there is no comma after the last item. So what I did here was, um, if the last uh, character in the line is not the separator, I added it on. Okay, and that lets me not have to treat the last items uh, specially. It simplifies my code. So uh, I start at the beginning of the line and um, just do a loop where I read one item, uh, put the item into the cell, and uh, keep going like that. And here you can see that my first column that I use is the date column. 
and then um, each item I read, I increase the column index by one. And so by making the date column here uh, be column five, that's how I arrange for the data to start in column five. Okay. So the way the data comes from Yahoo, they put the most recent date first in the uh, data block you've chosen. But what I want to do is have the most recent date last. So um, the next thing I did was to create a macro to reverse the data. And let's see that in action. So right here, uh, reverse order. So notice I'm starting with 6-28-2011 and going backwards on my dates. So when I push this button, now I'm starting with 8-19-2004 and going forwards. Okay, so this reversed the data. Um, if you look at the code for that particular function, it's not very pretty. Um, here it is. And the reason is I wrote this code, if you want to call it writing, by recording the macro. Um, there are things in here you wouldn't want to put in your own code, for example, uh, well, it's just kind of unreadable and there's no um, no particular comments. So I threw a few in. I threw a little bit of stuff in to make it more readable. But basically, this is from recording a macro. Okay. Now, um, we're going to do some technical analysis. And that's a way to study stock prices without knowing anything about the company. So disclaimer up front, that I'm going to show you a very typical kind of technical analysis. I'm not saying you should trade stocks using this, please. Um, so don't think that. Okay. So um, one big staple of technical analysis, as it says, is the moving average. So the idea is... Um, if you average over several days, you smooth out some of the variations. You get a good idea of how the price is trending for that particular time period. So what we're going to do is start with a um, single day average of the high, low, and close. And that's the first thing I compute. I'll do that here. Okay, so this is my one day moving average. Oh, I want to add my headings there. Okay. So I've got a one-day moving average, and now what I want to do is make a three-day average. So that means take the most recent three days, and that's our value. This one would be these three days. This one would be these three days, and so on. So I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And here's the code. And of course, I don't get one actually. Sorry, I did that backwards. These three go into here. These three go into here, and so on. For the first two days, I don't have enough history, so I can't do it. So this is my three-day average. Okay. Um, now, the theory we're going to look at with this particular technical analysis is that the market has been closing under the three-day moving average and it suddenly closes, closes over it. That's a signal that it's ready to go up. And if it's been closing over the three-day moving average and it suddenly closes under it, that's a signal that it's going to go down. So um, what I did on here is pick the cross days, um, the days when that happens. And I put up on the ones where the close crosses over to the top and down on the ones where the close crosses over to the downside. And if you look at the data, you'll see that actually um, this is fairly good, although you do get some false signals. Okay, now what you're going to do is a different multiple day moving average and uh, find the cross days for it. So it's going to be very similar to what I did for five days, but yours, yours will be for seven days or however many. Um, I didn't, sorry, I did mine for three days and yours will be for five or seven or some number like that. Uh, the idea is that maybe a longer period would work better. A lot of what technical analysts do is play around with these tools till they find something that works well for a particular stock. Now, so what do you need to do? Well, you'll need to move the data over two more columns because we want to keep everything we have already. We're not replacing it. We're adding a new study. And then you're going to be adding new buttons um, and putting in the code to do new computations. 
So, um, how are you going to do that? Well, if we go look at the code, first of all, I was pointing out how the, um, the date column controls where the data starts going. Well, if you want to move things over by two, you'll have to change this five to, say, a seven. And then um, you'll have to uh, pick a place for your new information to go and put it in here. And um, these things can remain the same. Okay, and then of course in the get headings, uh, in the create headings uh, subroutine, you'll have to put in some of your own headings. And then Here's the one-day average that you don't have to mess around with, or the three-day one. And yours can be very similar, only it'll be for the number of days you need to do. Uh, you can use a loop instead of writing it out as a formula like that. That's up to you. And um, then you can base your, your cross-average um, code on this code. So you want to leave this one the same, but then create one to use for yourself and you want to put buttons for yours onto the main spreadsheet. So you'll be adding a couple of buttons. Now, um, one other thing I did on here was just to show you how to make a chart. So this button does that. This is a stock price chart, and actually um, there's a lot of data in here, so it's very compressed. If you open it up, you'll be able to see more of the patterns here. And uh, that's kind of a fun thing to do. So, okay. And the, the other button, let's see if I can just quickly get rid of this. Cut. The other button we have clears the data. So if you want to start over, you can do that. Start over, get the data, etc. Okay, so, um, have fun with this. One thing you can do is make another column, and I actually left a blank one, uh, where you keep kind of a running total, assuming that you bought the stock um, at the close price on the first day, and you follow all the signals. Uh, you can actually keep a running total of how you would have done by uh, using this method. And um, that's kind of interesting to do. And once again, I want to say I'm not endorsing this as a way to actually spend your money, but I think it's um, fun to understand a little bit about what technical, technical analysts do. And of course, they use um, sometimes much, much more complex algorithms than what I'm showing you here, but this is typical of the type of thing that's done. Okay, thank you.